During the making of this video, the operators of various mines allowed the staging of certain conditions which may at first appear to be unsafe and not according to certain federal, state, and or company safety procedures. These scenes were created strictly to demonstrate the differences between correct and incorrect safety and work procedures in the mining environment. They in no way are a true reflection of the condition or operation of the mine shown in this video production. Hello, welcome to another in our exciting mine safety video series. Today, we're going to examine the zone many equipment operators get caught in. We've often heard familiarity breeds carelessness. In the next few minutes, we will discuss proper and improper mobile equipment operation. Billy Bob, wake up, Bubba. He really needs to see this, so maybe he won't put the bulldozer in the pit again. They come in all sizes and shapes in the mining work environment. We could be talking about forklifts, bobcats or skid steers, articulated haul trucks, larger haul trucks, front end loaders, water trucks, bulldozers, track hose. Mobile cranes, pans or scrapers, and even man lifts. Treat them with respect and operate any of these pieces of equipment in a safe manner, and they get the job done for us in the mining work environment. However, drift off in your thinking, lose your concentration, forget a pre-shift inspection, and operate them in an unsafe manner, and you have entered the danger zone with heavy equipment. Today in this training session, we want to review unsafe acts that may lead to accidents, injuries, and even death with mobile equipment. We also want to cover safe operating procedures and accident prevention with this equipment while on your work shift. As a fellow once said, this machine ain't got no brain, so you're going to have to use your brain to operate the equipment to keep you both out of the danger zone. So how can we combat entering the danger zone? Many operator injuries occur in mobile equipment because a seat belt isn't being worn or the operator disconnected his seat belt and tried to jump from moving equipment. In the event of equipment rollover or a collision with any other object, Without that seat belt to hold you in place, you're gonna bounce around in that cab like a ping pong ball in a rolling bucket. Your neck or back could be broken. Your arms or legs could be broken. Worse, you could be knocked unconscious and not be able to get out of the equipment once the rollover or collision has occurred. Even if you're driving a runaway haul truck or front end loader, keep your seat belt on and resist the urge to disconnect the belt and jump. Multiple accident investigations by MSHA have concluded that many operators were crushed by mobile equipment or suffered massive body trauma and injury when they disconnected the seat belt and jumped. Instead, keep your seat belt on and ride the vehicle to a stop, whether it be steering it gradually into a berm wall, guiding it to softer ground and slowing it to a stop, or just riding it until momentum has stopped. If during a pre-shift inspection of your equipment, you identify that the seat belt is defective, tag it out, report it to your supervisor, and do not operate it until repaired, as required by 30 CFR, parts 5657.14100. A defective seat belt is no small matter and is according to 5657.14130 and .14131 a required piece of safety equipment. Get any of these pieces of equipment moving faster than the speed limit 
and you put yourself in the vehicle in the danger zone immediately. The center of gravity varies depending on the type of the vehicle, the load you're carrying, the position of the load, and the terrain you're traveling over. Vehicle rollover or a collision are the most likely results from excessive speed. When you're driving a haul truck, front end loader, bulldozer, or water truck on travelways, look for that speed limit sign and then obey it at all times. Let's take this safety process to another level. Regardless of even the posted speed limit, let's operate the vehicle at an appropriate speed for the existing travelway conditions. Now that means if it's raining, if it's foggy, if there's frost or ice on the ground, if another vehicle ahead of you is traveling slower than you are, or if you can't see around a curve or over a hill or rise in the road, or if you're traveling up or down an inclined grade, operate at an appropriate speed for the existing conditions on the travelway. Better to be slower and safe than to travel at an unsafe speed that results in injury or death. If you move a drag line, front end loader, bulldozer, or track hoe too close to the face of a high wall or the edge of a lake in a wet mine, you've entered the danger zone. Blasting operations create fissures or cracks that run parallel and perpendicular or away from the face. Do not operate any of this equipment too close to the face. If you have any doubt about the proper distance you need to be from the edge of the face, then ask your supervisor before you move equipment into place and start using it. When you are using a bulldozer at stockpiles around draw hole areas, the slope and grade of stockpiles vary. You do not want to put the bulldozer into a position that creates excess lean. Putting excess lean on the bulldozer can put you in the danger zone and cause the equipment to roll over with very serious consequences. Know where draw holes are. Don't travel too near or over draw holes as the bulldozer could fall in or roll over. When overburden is being cleared and large amounts of material have to be moved, often pans or scrapers or other equipment are used to move the earth. Since overburden is being cleared and moved, the land is very unlevel and does not necessarily have established travel ways. Again, if you get one side of the equipment higher than the other on unlevel ground, you have entered a danger zone. Keep the equipment as level as possible without putting excess lean on it as you collect move and then deposit materials. While operating any kind of haul trucks there are several ways to avoid the danger zone. First, when taking on a load of material don't be overloaded. Carry only the proper amount of material and don't exceed the manufacturer's load limits. Second, keep the haul truck on established travel ways and drive on the proper side of the roadway according to signage placed at the mine. Observe those traffic patterns to avoid head-on collisions. Third, observe the proper following distance behind other haul trucks and equipment. Other vehicles should also travel a safe distance behind your haul truck. Like this vehicle, they should stay back giving themselves ample time to stop if necessary and to avoid falling rock or material from a truck in front of them that might be going slower than they are. Fourth, when you get to the crusher, know where the bumper block is. Back up slowly and do not run into or pound against the bumper block. Avoid hitting and damaging the bumper block and possibly even rolling backward into the crusher with a fully loaded haul truck. Also, be certain to lower the dump bed after dumping and before leaving the crusher. When dumping materials at sites where ground conditions are changing, be sure the ground is stable, level, and properly burned. Operator error in the cab of mobile equipment often occurs because of fatigue. Eat a balanced diet, get adequate sleep, and be alert on your shift. 
You have to treat your body well in order to function at your best in the cab. If you're taking medication which may affect your ability to safely operate your equipment, please consult company policy and discuss it with your supervisor prior to operating that equipment. In any moving equipment, keep looking in the direction of travel. You can't afford even for a second to take your eyes from the direction your equipment is traveling. There are distractions you should avoid. An object in the cab, such as a radio microphone, a cup of coffee, your lunchbox, or anything else could fall to the floor. Never take your eyes off the travel way to look at and pick up such an object while underway. As we've said, the equipment weighs many thousands of pounds and requires you to steer and stop it with your eyes focused on the travel path to avoid collision, rollover, or other accidents. Operator distraction can be caused by fatigue on the job. There are times when the weather is extremely hot, the hours are long, and the conditions cause you to mentally drift in and out of being focused. Drink plenty of water to keep from getting dehydrated. Take appropriate company approved breaks. And if you feel ill or excessively fatigued, tell your supervisor at once. Operate with caution at night and be aware of power lines. Night shift work can cause fatigue. Allow yourself extra space and stopping time for equipment you operate. Your company requires it. MSHA requires it. So please perform your pre-shift inspection using the appropriate printed form for the mobile equipment you operate on your shift. On mobile equipment, among the items on your form, one of the most important that you can focus on during the pre-shift inspection is the braking system. A haul truck may have as many as three braking systems on it. A front end loader may have a wet brake or dry brake system. It is absolutely essential that the braking system be working properly before you ever start to operate this piece of mobile equipment. If the braking system is not working properly, you have entered the danger zone and pose great risk to your safety and the safety of fellow miners. With any piece of equipment during the pre-shift inspection, clean the windshield. Clear vision and the ability to see under all conditions are often overlooked. Yeah, it'll take a bit of extra time, but being able to see clearly will be invaluable as you use the equipment and perform your job safely during the shift. When inspecting fire extinguishers on mobile equipment during the pre-shift, make certain that no one has attached an improper wire or plastic tie to hold the pin in. The wire or plastic tie can cause a severe finger laceration or amputation if the operator pulls it out and tries to quickly pull the pin during an emergency. One final note during pre-shift inspections. Any items that are found to be defective should be documented on the written form by you. Prior to beginning the next work shift, you need to review that form and those defective items and verify that they have been corrected. If not, take the matter to your supervisor. Don't just assume that defects have been corrected. Verify that they have been remedied and have a safe work shift. As you can see today, there are many things that you can do to perform safely and prevent injuries and accidents in the use of mobile equipment and mining. Yes, do wear your seatbelt. Obey speed limits and observe traffic patterns. Correctly manage ground conditions. Avoid operator distraction and perform pre-shift safety inspections. Most importantly, carry the attitude of safety every minute of every day with you as you perform your job. Think and plan ahead. Operate safely. There really is no job so urgent, so important, that you can't take the time to perform it safely. It's no accident the Sentinels of Safety Award has the image of a mother and child. They represent a miner's family watching him go off to work at the mine, hoping and praying he will come home at the end of the shift. Those who depend on you most want you home safely at the end of your shift. Until our next exciting mine safety training video, work safe.